Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on circumference. Our objective is to find the circumference of circles. And if we were to scan this lesson and list two headings that we would use to make an outline of the lesson, you may find that those two headings would be radius and diameter, with the second heading of, well, the title of our lesson here, which happens to be circumference. For our vocabulary startup, a circle is the set of all points in a plane that are the same distance from a point called the center. Their circumference is the distance around a circle. The diameter is the distance across a circle through its center. The radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. Fill in the box with one of the following terms, center, diameter, and radius. Well, we'll start with center. That's pointing to that middle point in the circle, so that's the center. The diameter is the distance across a circle through the center, and well, that's represented right here across the circle through the center, so that's going to be the diameter. And the radius is the distance from the center to any point, and so that is the radius. Very important terminology to know as we look to find circumference of circles today and areas of circles down the road. For our real world link today, the table shows the appropriate or approximate measures of two sizes of hula hoops. Describe the relationship between the diameter and radius of each hula hoop. Well, from radius to diameter, well, this is 14 times 2 is 28, and 20 times 2 is 40, so we can say the diameter is twice the radius, or the radius times 2, or any version of that. Describe the relationship between the circumference and diameter of each hula hoop. Well, if you were to take something like 88 and divide it by 28, you would get something along the lines of 3.14, and it keeps going in your calculator. If you're to take something along the lines of 126, the circumference, and divide it by the diameter 40, you would get huh, 3.15. So it's just a little bit bigger than 3. It's interesting. Well, our key concept, the diameter D of a circle is twice its radius R. The radius R is half of its diameter d, and that's what we found in our real world link table. So in our example, the diameter of a circle is 14 inches, find the radius. Well, the radius in our formula here equals the diameter divided by 2, and so we put in 14 for the diameter, divide by 2, and get the radius to be 7. The radius of a circle is 8 feet, find the diameter. Well, we can use diameter equals 2 times r. Well, 2 times 8, and that's 16 feet. Stop and reflect. The diameter of a circle is 36 inches. Circle the radius. Well, for that one, the radius is equal to the diameter divided by 2. So the radius is going to equal the diameter, which is 36 divided by 2, and the radius is going to be 18 inches. So that's the answer there, 18 inches. Let's continue on to our got it problems. Find the radius or diameter of each circle with the given dimension. So we have to focus here and make sure we're solving for the right things. For A, we're given the diameter is 23 centimeters. 
we're looking then for the radius. So we can use the formula radius equals the diameter divided by 2. So the radius is going to equal the diameter 23 divided by 2. So the radius is going to equal 11 and a half or 11 and 5 tenths centimeters. In our next question, B, we're given the radius is 3 inches. So we're looking for the diameter. So we can use diameter equals 2 times r. Diameter equals 2 times 3. And so the diameter equals 6 inches. In C, we're given the diameter is 16 inches. So we're looking for the radius. And the radius is equal to the diameter divided by 2. The radius is going to equal 16 divided by 2. The radius is going to be 8 yards. And lastly, we're given in D, the radius is 5 and 2 tenths units of some sort. And so we're looking for the diameter. So the diameter is going to equal 2 times the radius. So 2 times 5 and 2 tenths. So our diameter is simply 10 and 4 tenths, whatever units that's supposed to be. 10 and 4 tenths. So in summary, if you're given the diameter and you need to find the radius, you'll be dividing by 2. If you're given the radius and you need to find the diameter, you'll be multiplying by 2. Now our next key concept is how to find circumference and what is circumference. The circumference of a circle is equal to pi times its diameter or pi times twice its radius. So our two formulas here, circumference equals pi times diameter or circumference equals 2 times pi times the radius. Now, if you take circumference divided by diameter, as we did in our real world link, the first one was 3.14, the next one was 3.15. So it's about equal to 3, as we can see here. The exact ratio is represented by the Greek letter, this thing, which is called pi. Now the value of pi is 3.1415926, on and on and on and on and on. The decimal never ends but it's often approximated by 3.14. Another approximation for pi is 22 sevenths. Now, we'll use this value when the radius or diameter is a multiple of 7, or has a multiple of 7 in the numerator if the radius is a fraction. It's one of those, if you have a fraction, and the numerator is 7 or a multiple of 7, it'll probably just be easier to use 22 sevenths instead of 3.14. Both are acceptable approximations of pi. And so we have our first example here. Find the circumference of a circle with a radius of 21 inches. Since 21 is a multiple of 7, 7, 14, 21, 28, since it's a multiple of 7, we'll use 22 sevenths for pi. So we'll use the formula since we're given the radius. Circumference equals 2 times pi times r. Circumference, now we go into about equal to. Instead of straight equal signs, this means approximately equal to because we're now estimating with the pi. And we'll use 22 sevenths and 21. We'll cross simplify here and end up with about 132. And so now we get to try this on our own. Find the circumference of each circle, and we're told here, use 22 sevenths for pi. And just looking at the questions quickly, 70 is a multiple of 7. And 7 eighths, well, we have the numerator of 7 there, so it makes sense to use 22 sevenths instead of 3.14 for pi. Now, you really do need to focus here, since you are given two different formulas, 
that are kind of the same for circumference. Pay attention to what you're given. In E, we're given 70 inches as the diameter. So you want to use the formula that gives you the diameter. Meaning, we'll use circumference equals pi times diameter for E. Compared to F, where we're given the radius, you'll be using the formula circumference equals pi times radius, but it's 2 times pi times radius, because when you really think about it, what's 2 times the radius? Time's up. The answer is the diameter. So 2R really is equal to D, and that's why they look different, but they're really the same when it comes to the circumference formulas. Now let's get to solving these. Circumference is going to be about equal to, and we're told to use 22 sevenths here for pi, times 70. No, I might as well write the 70 as 70 over 1, because I can go and cross-simplify now by dividing by 7. I get 1 and 10, and so my final answer is going to be circumference is about equal to 22 times 10, which is 220 inches. And again, we use the about equal to, since we're estimating with pi, we're approximating our pi. In example f now, we'll have circumference is about equal to 2 times, we'll use 22 sevenths again, times 7 eighths. Now I'm going to write this 2 over 1 as well. Well, we can start off by simplifying the 7 and the 7. We'll divide by 7, you get 1 and 1 here. And it can actually do something kind of cool, too. You can simplify this 2 with this 8 as well, since they're multiplying all 3. And you can divide the 2 by 2 and get 1, and the 8 by 2 and get 4. We can take it one more step. What about the 22 and the 4? Well, divide by 2 there, you get 11. By 2 here, you get 2. So circumference is going to be about equal to 11 halves, which is the same thing as 5 and a half feet. So our answer for E was 220 inches, and our answer for F is five and one-half feet. Big Ben is a famous clock tower in London, England. The diameter of the clock face is 23 feet. Find the circumference of the clock face, round to the nearest tenth. Well, we're given the diameter, and 23 is not a multiple of seven, so we'll use 3.14 as our approximation for pi here. So the circumference equals 3.14 times the diameter 23, which is about equal to 72 and 2 tenths. And now we get to try this on our own. A circular fence is being placed to surround a tree. The diameter of the fence is 4 feet. How much fencing is used? And we're told now use 3.14 for pi, and the reason why is 4 is not a multiple of 7. It would not make sense to use the 22 sevenths here. Now, we're given the diameter, so we're going to use circumference equals pi times diameter. Always start your circumference problems by which formula you're using. And now we'll substitute in circumference is going to be about equal to, our pi we're using is 3.14, and our diameter here is 4. When I multiply these together, I get 12.56. And now it comes down to following our directions. It says round to the nearest tenth. So we need to round to the nearest tenth, which is our 5. We look over to the 6, and the 6 is 5 and above. Give it a shove. Circumference is going to be 12 and 6 tenths feet, or at least about. 12 and 6 tenths feet. 
One little minor note here, some calculators have a pi button. That gives you the longest decimal that it can give, 3.1415, however. If your directions do say, though, to use 22 sevenths or 3.14 for pi, be careful. If you use that pi button, you may get a slightly different answer, and unfortunately, sometimes a wrong answer because you weren't using the correct approximation for pi. So make sure you follow directions on that. And that's it for this lesson on circumference, our first in chapter eight. Good luck.